I feel good. I the the whole um, thing that's happening in France is quite exciting because I I got the first wave of what was happening in France in around 1994-95 uh, with a lot of raves uh, that were in the south of France uh, near Grenoble, Lyon, Marseille, and the energy of the French crowd is very honest and uh, exciting. It sort of came from nowhere. I don't know what happened, but it started about three years ago. There's always been a, a, a techno uh, following in, in France, especially in Paris and uh, many other cities as well. But all of a sudden, it's like the new generation just realized that, holy shit, it's not about David Guetta, it's about David Better. Just get, these things just catch people's imaginations. I don't think you can work out a formula of why. Um, I mean, there's a lot of magazine support in France from magazines like Trax. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of clubs in France that have been doing their thing for so very, very long without going off the, the agenda, like clubs like Rex, which I've been playing for maybe 15 years now. And then, of course, you have other clubs uh, like uh, Concrete, and uh, then you have Weather Festival. And so it's the whole mesh of different things from magazines to uh, organizers just realizing that, um, you know, that it's, it's a good thing to do and then the crowds come along. And it's, 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 it's very exciting to be here. Feel the house. House music. House music. Do you believe? Do you believe? In the house. No, it's not something I really think about. I just think about techno. I don't think about the consequences or why. I just do it. Um, so to think about mass consumption, so I, I don't know. Uh, I don't think you're ever going to hear it on uh, radio, and it's not going to be on France 24 television. So um, you're always going to have David Guetta with a penis coming out of his head at the World Cup. So. That's always going to be for mass consumption. You're not going to see, sadly, actually, you're not going to see maybe Laurent Garnier at um, um, at the uh, the World Cup, which is a bit of a shame um, because for for me he's a French hero. And yeah, I, I, actually, the weird thing is I know David Guetta a little bit. Super sweet guy, and I always end up taking the piss out of him. I'm sorry, David, but you know, musically we're so different. Um, but Laurent is, you know. It would have been nice to see him at France, uh, the, the, the World Cup. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's, that's my premise of, of action. It's like I'm always doing that because it's who I am. And that's why techno suits me and I like making techno. Um, it's always going to be revolutionary, but you know, the French have always been a little bit revolutionary as well. I mean, we, we've had that horrible saying in the England that the French are revolting, which is a double meaning, but the French are always revolting. They're always revolting about, about things. So in, I can imagine why it's getting bigger here because it's, it's an anti-establishment music. And uh, in France, they're very expressive about being anti-establishment. Fucking, I'm fucking worried. I'm really, really worried because we got. Um, I mean, I'm. I still consider myself European, even though 52% uh, of idiots in the UK voted themselves out without realizing what the fuck was going on, most of them anyway. Um, I worry about that right now. We've got some new Margaret Thatcher woman um, in the UK who's fucking up the world uh, from her perspective with, with the policies of the UK. Uh, she did a speech where they were the fifth, boasting about the fifth biggest economy, then it slows down to being the sixth biggest economy after the, after the speech. Uh, in Berlin, um, you've got uh, less moderation, I think, because I always saw Angela Merkel as quite a moderate um, chancellor, and now people are rebelling against her. And the immigration problem, uh, which it is a problem, uh, is down to mostly American foreign policy followed by European army action without any help from the Americans sorting out the immigration problem. 
Um, and then, of course, I worry. I, I'm less worried now since Donald Trump basically said that he can just grab anyone's pussy and it's fine. <laughs> but, bef <laughs> but, but, but before that, I was more worried about it because I actually thought that Donald Trump might win with maybe 53% because he got two really bad candidates. Um, so the world is in a really precarious position right now. It's not in a safe position at all. And I worry about that very much. And sometimes I think maybe I should live in Iceland or New Zealand just to escape. It's up to every artist what they want to do. Now, I've spoken a lot about different things, being very much anti-UKIP, which is this disgraceful party in the UK, against Farage. And I've spoken out about this, and people say, you're an artist, you shouldn't speak. Well, I'm also a human being with an opinion. Um, so I think if you're comfortable with talking about stuff, then you should talk about it. If you're not comfortable about it, then you shouldn't. Um, but whatever you do, whether you're a painter, decorator, driver, DJ, if you have a political opinion, you should have the right to express it, simply put. Um, yeah, it is a shame there's no lyrics in techno. I mean, when I think of lyrics, I think of like Nitzer Ebb, uh, Die Warsaw, uh, that sort of stuff. And maybe again that will happen. Um, but you also have people that just want to dance and they don't necessarily want politics thrust upon them. And I think sometimes the best politics that are put in this situation are very subtle and not in your face. Um, you have to respect that people also have a hard life, uh, find it tough to earn money, tough being a student, um, tough with families, and they want to also go out and listen to music and forget their problems. And musically, Techno has that undercurrent which is there, which isn't like a stupid undercurrent. It's, it's an undercurrent of being anti-establishment, so it's more subtle. And maybe that's enough. And me doing interviews like this. <laughs> Actually having enough of social media, I was in a car accident uh, coming from exit in June, I think it was, uh, or July, I'm not sure. And I was already getting fed up with social media anyway, uh, on my personal page at the very least. And I actually pretty stopped using it. Uh, I use it for messaging people, because uh, it's nice. But I don't really put many things up on my own Facebook page anymore, because I've been stalked. Um, people get upset if you don't put things up. Uh, people get upset if you do put things up. And I don't need to have a picture of me in a beer and going, life's great, and then get, how many likes have I got? 14 likes, okay, then it's good, you know. Um, unfortunately for a professional page, then I still need to do that. But that's okay, you know, you're, you're just documenting your life a little bit. Um, but I, I think social media is also very, very dangerous, actually. Um, so I'm, I'm more wary of it now than I ever was. These words may cause wonder, but listen carefully to the distant thunder. It shall have his due, this is their lot. Oh, he is worthy praise that shrinketh not.